It's uh, the day before 4th of July, and we are here for the Durango and Durango and Silverton <laughs> narrow gauge railroad. There was a huge line of cars trying to get in here, and they were turning people away because they did not prepay for parking. So that was a smart move to buy a parking pass a couple of weeks ahead of time, right? Maybe. Caleb can do, yeah. Daddy's cool. Thank yeah. you. Daddy's really awesome. Uh -huh. Caleb can do a great impression of a train. Do it. <laughs> Where I see steam, I see train. There it is. Look at that thing, huh? Look at that. I like that one.
rode the train from Durango to Silverton. We hopped the uh, historic narration coach, I guess. Boarding was at 9 a.m., three and a half hour train ride all the way up to Silverton. Almost two hours while they turned around the train and then we hopped back on and rode south. And now it's uh, seven o'clock. And I didn't think I'd be so tired for riding a train, but especially coming back, it was very rocking and rolling. Yeah, it was a rougher ride on the way back. I don't know if it was because it was faster or... Uh, Downhill? Yeah, but it said that they said that it was uh, it was controlled, so it's not like it just flies down the hill. Yeah, you're, just you're let just off the brakes and head back down the mountain. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, I think it was really worth it to go extra for the historic narration coach because of just what extra you get learning about the uh, you know, history of the area. They kind of get in character and talk about different things. I guess the tips I would give are, number one, you need to get parking ahead of time because there's a lot of people turned away for their parking lot here. The other one is I think probably if you are going to, if you need to, if you're trying to choose seats, I think the east side of the train is probably the most time you're going to get the view of the river. So if you're heading north, that would be the uh, right side of the train. But there was the sunny side the whole way. I sat in the shade the whole time, going and coming. And that was very comfortable. But on it's the way true. back, on the way up, if you're leaning out the window, you're, you need sunscreen because you're going to be sunburned. And uh, on the way back, the sun is on that side as well, on the west side. Right, so you kind of got to, if you don't want any sun, then you would want to be on the west side of the train going up and the east side of the train coming back down. Yeah. If you want a view, you need to reverse that. And if you're just going to do a bus ride one way, I think I would probably do the bus ride back um, because it's less freaking jerky on the train going north. Of course, we didn't ride the bus, so we have no idea what it's like, but I wasn't about to get on a bus and riding over the million dollar highway, so we just took the train both ways. It was good. And then we got two different narrators, one going up and one going back, and you can buy the official guidebook from the nice little guy that comes through the car, it takes credit cards. And so we had a character that was the General William Jackson Palmer. He was, he was very good in character. And then we had the Marshal of Durango. I think Dewey something or? Famous Maybe. guy that we forgot his name. Really famous, who we don't know. And, uh, what the other helpful thing was the five dollars, bring for five dollars worth of map. Folds out, gives all the mile markers, nice history. Yep. And it, uh, our, our little guy really enjoyed the uh, train whistle guide on the back. Yep. Not just random whistles, they all mean something. I didn't know that. Very interesting for a seven year old. Okay. Speaking of. <laughs> Speaking of our seven year old. What'd you think of the train ride, buddy? All right. <laughs> oh, is that your... Yep. He's got his own train whistle down. How about you, dear? I was approaching the station. What'd you think of the narration? The second time, I think it was a better story than the first. Did it make it more interesting? <laughs> yes. Yes, it did. Say, look, it's talking back to you. Oh, look, the train's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> The only other thing I, is uh, when you get into Silverton, the time is at a premium. When you get to Silverton, you don't have a lot of time for lunch. And so we just ended up at the uh, Golden Golden Block Brewery. Didn't even have any beer, just had some pizza. And uh, it was really good pizza. It was quick in, quick out. Every other place, every other sit down place had a line. Uh, but we also brought food with us. You brought food on the train. And uh, that was good, so we could have snacks and drinks. And, uh, but in the historic car, they give you a souvenir cup, so you can walk your way up to the concessions. You can buy food and snacks and drinks for a relatively cheaper than Disney World price. Yeah, so uh, apparently in our car, especially, for, I don't know, maybe for Everybody's special, but maybe we were special, but we got the cups for free, which meant we could refill to our heart's content the whole ride. Which doesn't mean refill every minute or 
so. But, you know, my advice would be to uh, don't depend on the concessions car because, I mean, you're not on a modern, super modern train. You're on a narrow gauge, historic railroad through the mountains. And if you can bring it and have it on you, like water and some snacks and stuff, and have to avoid walking through the train, yeah, bring um, your, I would suggest that. Bring your camel back full of water or yeah. bring big water bottles that way because uh, navigating the train up and back, it's... It's walking through a moving vehicle. And, and it's moving. Uh, yeah, and it was not, um, I wouldn't recommend it for people that are not good on their feet or small children because you have to walk between the right. car connections and that's a moving thing. So, uh, and you end up bumping into people and stuff. So just yeah. bring lots of water with you and um, maybe plan on a few, you know, souvenir snacks or something. but. They're not serving full lunches or anything like that. That's Get right. that in silver tea. The last tip I can think of is if you are a family uh, of four or so, or if you're just more than two, then what we did was we chose seats that were across the aisle, so we had flexibility of choosing which side of the train we wanted to be on at what time. Um, so that's really, I think those are all my tips. That's all I can think of. That was helpful. We're gonna eat the rest of our pizza and crash. Yes. I think we're all tired. Got up early, train wore us out more than anticipated. And tomorrow's 4th of July, so who knows what we're gonna do, but we'll probably get wore out more. What? You telling me something? Off camera? Production note. Production note. Oh, now it's time for B-roll. Okay, roll the B-roll. See you tomorrow. Show me your box. No? I'm gonna go, I'm done. Oh, okay, he's done.